Hello, Internet. Um, I had an idea with this pet game thing. Um, so if you haven't seen the previous video, I've made this Super Skeleton basic pet game, quote unquote. Um, I say quote unquote because it has almost nothing in it. Um, you can sign up and you can log in and you can have a pet and you can feed it to give it energy and you can go exploring which is random stuff. But it does nothing else. That is it. I really want this to be something that anyone could build any kind of game they want. Maybe not even a pet game. Maybe you want to replace this silly little creature with a hero and you send them off in adventures. It's up to you. Uh, what I thought I would do, though, now that this thing exists, is make a bunch of little videos where I just add a feature, a feature that you might expect from a pet game or whatever. Um, so, yeah, if you've got ideas for, for little add-ons that, that could be made, uh, great. And the intention is that you could take any combination of these you wanted like think of each video as, as a plug-in or an add-on uh, if you if you want the thing that this video adds you can add it if you don't want it then never mind go find a different video that adds another thing uh the previous video it's about 40 minutes um shows adding a new thing where you can uh have your pet meet new pets uh another video idea i have is maybe making it so you can breed two pets and have like little patterns that go from pet to pet that wouldn't be too hard um, but what I think I'm going to do for this video, since it's the first one, is something super simple. Uh, and that is just to show a list of all the players in the game. Because uh, currently there's no way to do that. So if we check out um, the players in the database, and again, if you don't have um, like this tool, Heidi SQL, I have a bunch of tools you might want in this README. Um, if you follow this through, I've got, um, yeah, a bunch of tools that, you would, that would help you out for programming. And, and Heidi SQL is one of them. So definitely uh, check that one out. If you don't already have it, uh, very useful for looking at your database. So here we can see I have a bunch of players in the database. I've signed up numerous times to test things. Uh, most of them are uncreatively named Ben. Uh, but let's make a page where we can see all of these different, you know, players, just, just to list them out. Um, I'm not going to worry about, well, we'll see. We'll see how long it takes, how advanced I want to get. I mean, we could add things like next and, you know, next page, previous page, jump to page, that kind of stuff. I think that might take a little long for, for this kind of video. Um, but uh, let's just go ahead and make the simple page and see where it goes. Also, I might decide to do some things that, um, you know, having said that these are intended to all stand alone, be independent, um, mix and match as you please, I might do some little things that just add to the core game. Like I think a drop down menu um, that, you know, works well with mobile, that could be a thing that just comes in the base game and things like that. So, but anyway, for this one, list of players, let's just make this a totally separate thing. Maybe you wouldn't want a list of players, or is the way I'm about to implement it. So, let's just call it, a, yeah, li list of players. Why not? <laughs> call it what it is. Um, so, I didn't happen to use the, you saw that I had an option to make a new page, and you might have different options, to, you will have different options depending on the particular IDE you use. I'm using Writer, but again, if you look at the, the README on the repository, um, and which I'll link to in, in the description. Uh, there's other IDEs that you might use. Visual Studio is, there's a free version of, VS Code is very popular. Um, all good options, and you'll get different menus here. Um, but anyway, I wanted to call out, I do have an option to make a new page. The reason I didn't choose it is that it comes with a lot of extra stuff that I know I don't want. Um, I want something much more basic. Uh, and if we look at, for example, like this index page, right? This is all we really need. But if I do new page, it's going to give me other stuff I don't care about. So actually, let's just copy that. Uh, we have to give this page a URL, so slash just means, you know, the the root here. Uh, if we look at something like login, that goes to slash login, and, you know, we could try that out, slash login. Great, that is indeed the login page, so I need a URL for this one. Of course, it needs to be unique. Um, maybe I'll just call it players, uh, and we will say players, and I oh, don't know. Players. So the difference between these two things, page title is what appears up here, and um, whatever is in H1, this is just normal HTML, that's what actually appears on the page. So they could be different. Um, I don't know why you would want them to be. <laughs> Maybe there's good reasons. Actually, I can think of good re reasons. You might have extra information. Um, actually, uh, what I probably should do is say pet game dash players, and I think that's what I've done for the login page. Yeah, pet game dash my house. That's right pet game dash login. So we would want the whole kind of trail up in the window title uh, for players. But um, when you're actually looking at the page, gosh, sorry, I can't click. Uh, let's just see the 
the thing that we, you know, the individual thing. Um, also, you might notice this little bar has appeared up here because I made changes. If you're using uh, Visual Studio or Rider, they definitely have this feature. I don't know about VS Code, but it's called Hot Reload. And it just lets me apply the changes to the game without having to uh, stop and restart it and rebuild. And that takes some time. So even if you're looking at a page, you can say apply changes and it'll just apply uh, right here as you're watching. And you know, maybe I'll even stick this off on the side so you can see that happen. Um, so let's go to the list of players, just to check it out. Nothing at that address. Hmm, maybe that doesn't work as well as I'd like. Let's try and restart. <laughs> maybe it's because I added a whole new page, whereas changes on the page would, would work a little better. Let's see, players, okay. That could be it. I don't, I don't actually use the, um, this will work though, so apply. And now it's gonna take off. Welcome to my pet game, right? Curious, that was just working a second ago. Now I feel silly. Well, anyway, I've had some success with it. It's not working as well here. I don't really know why, um, but I'm just gonna move on. So we're gonna want to go through all of the um, players and maybe we'll put them in a little table so that we can have their name, their sign up date. Maybe if you added, um, you know, players can choose an avatar for themselves, you would wanna put that in this table. Um, but let's go ahead and, and, and make a little table and I'll give it a heading too. You know, we might as well say, uh, Here's the row. Yeah, I, I know this is just me, but I like to indent everything that is a block element. Whatever, I'm kind of getting off track. Uh, so anyway, here's, let's say the name and let's say sign up date. These are the two things. And again, in principle, you could show other information. Maybe you want the last activity date. Um, the base game doesn't track that, but you could add that feature yourself. Um, okay, and then in the body, we're going to go over all of the players. So we'll say for each player in all players, uh, except we are getting the red. We haven't defined all players. What, what are all players? We need to tell it how to get that. So, hey, do you see that? Hey, I really need to find out how to make it not. It really wants to indent in its own way. I think there's settings for that. I'm going to leave it alone. It's usually best not to fight the IDE. I mean, I am being a little weird. Most people don't indent things within T head and T body. And so I'm the one being weird. So I should stop and just do what the, what the IDE would prefer. Um, so we can do, I believe, uninitialized. Yep. So this will get called when the page is, is first visited. It will do this uninitialized. And I don't remember exactly what all these are called off the top of my head, but I know that if I type override, it's going to give me the options. Um, and that's to do with how blazer um there's there's some magic going on under the, under the hood that, that we, we're not really seeing it's kind of hidden uh, the way blazer is structured uh, but these functions all exist already even though we can't see them but i can override them to give them different behavior uh, the default behavior is they do nothing um, but i can give them some different behavior so uh, the difference by the way you see there's uninitialized async and uninitialized it really depends on and this gets into more complicated programming stuff. Uh, let's just say we're gonna go for async and you should probably just default to async. If you have worked with await async in other languages before in C sharp, then you can make your own decisions about what seems best. But I would say pretty safe default is just to do um, the async methods. Something that is a little annoying about Rider, your IDE might be a little different, is it should really default to saying async here. That is the more common thing. Again, VS Code might do that, Visual Studio might do that. I don't have as much experience with those IDEs, um, but it needs to be there uh, depending on what you put in this method body. So again, it's just a good default to do um, and the squiggly yellow underlines are fine. We don't have to worry about that as much as squiggly red <laughs> or all red is the case maybe. Um, so anyway, we're gonna wanna load up uh, now some players from the database. And actually let's make a list to hold them. So we will have a uh, list of Player. And these are going to come right out of the database. There's different ways you could do this. I'm just going to pull the players straight out of the database. Um, excuse me. Uh, so let's just do that. Oops, all players get set. Um, so a player does exist, it knows that, um, and it's suggesting, hey, do you want to import this? Press Alt Enter to apply. I'm going to say, yes, I know that player exists. By the way, how do you know that player exists? Depends on your familiarity with pet game. So we have a player's table. We also have a pet's table. Um, there is code that corresponds to every table. You can find those in database tables. 
So this is the player we're asking for. We're saying we want a list of these players. Uh, we want a list of these pets maybe on other pages. But these are the things that, you know, we want, they correspond to this table. And that's what we're trying to get at. We want all the players. Um, if you make your own tables, you would add them here. Uh, and I have, I go over that in another video. Um, right, so something else, uh, this table is going to start empty. Uh, and so if you have something that can have no value at all, null it's called, uh, then you have to tell it that. Um, with, with the default setup that I've done for pet game, there are other settings you can have related to that. But for the purposes of pet game, if you want something to start totally empty, right, we haven't yet loaded, and it's going to take a second. Someone's going to hit this page, and then it has to go out to the database and, and get this data. And that's going to take, hopefully not a perceptible amount of time to the player, but to the code, it is going to take us a moment. Um, and so we have to be willing to say there's no players when, the moment they hit this page. Um, and so we have to put this little question mark. And if we don't, we get the squiggly red underlines, which means we can't even build this code. It's not going to run. Um, squiggly yellow, we can build it. And this is just warning to us right now that we're not using it. So there's just, and this is why it's a warning. It's like the IDE is telling me you can run this code, but I'm telling you, you don't ever use this all players variable. So why did you write it? Right. And so, okay, but we know that we're about to do something with it. And here we go, all players. Um, so we're going to ask the database and we need to get the database. So here's another little bit of ceremony we need to do. Um, if you want, um, there's there's different things uh, that run in the, they're called services. So I've got a list of services here. We have, for example, the current player. So if you wanted the current player, um, it's a service, you would have to have it injected into your page. Um, the database is also a service, but I decided to put all the database stuff into this database folder. So this is like a service that's not in services. That's a little confusing. Maybe I'll change that later. So depending on when you're watching this video. Um, why I mentioned this, as a general rule, anything you see in services, you know that you need to inject. Um, pet game database it kind of lives somewhere else. So it's, it's a little uh, different. Um, so I'm going to say I want pet game database. Here it is. And sorry about that. Database. So this is, I have um, a plugin that is suggesting more code. It's one of these AI powered things, GitHub Copilot. So if you see the gray text popping in all over the place, that's it being like, do you want to type this? Do you want to type that? Um, all right. Uh, getting the services is a little weird. Again, there's some funny ceremony. You got to say equals null. You can also say equals default. And it's going to give you a squiggly green underline here, which is an even weaker warning. So we, we really don't need to worry about well, I would argue that one should be a little stronger, but anyway. Um, okay, now we finally have the database. It's all a little bit of work. And again, if you're not familiar with Blazor especially, how would you know you need to do that? Well, you've got to go through a Blazor tutorial. Maybe you could count this as such a tutorial. Um, if you want these, again, they're called services uh, in, in this framework, which is Blazor, uh, you have to inject, you have to, um, for reasons we need to do null, it has to have this get set. It could be private, it could be public, that part doesn't matter. There's lots of little details. So depending on how much you understand, you can just kind of go with what I'm typing and blindly accept it. Um, these are all things, though, you know, if you don't understand, maybe you can do a little bit of Googling, and so that's why I'm bringing it up. If you already know, you're probably, like, tired of me doing all this explaining, and you just want me to get on with the point. Um, so let's go. <laughs> let's ask the database. So now we can say, hey, database, here are all your players. Um, I want them all. So... And we're going to do async. And when we do something async, we must await it. And async await, I mean, it's asynchronous code, right? So again, we've hit this player page, and we're saying, hey, I'm, I want you to go and get the database, but it's going to take some time. I don't want you to stop. I still want you to show this player page. Don't make everyone wait. Um, but, but we're going to do this asynchronous work of getting stuff from the database. Um, and in this case, all players can't be assigned until we have waited for this asynchronous work to get done. Um, and, and when you really get into doing async await, you can, you can get into some fun situations. Uh, something else I'll, I'll, I'll point out, um, Rider in particular, ooh, interesting, it's not suggesting it. Oftentimes it will suggest, it's like, hey, did you know there's an async version? Maybe you should use that because you're in an asyncish place. Um, so oftentimes it will suggest you to kind of upgrade to the asynchronous version. Um, in that case, it apparently isn't doing it. Okay, here's something else we can do. So, um, again, this page is going to load, but the players might not have been loaded yet. And that's why we're now getting this 
maybe confusing message, depending on how much programming you know. Uh, it's telling us that we're accessing something that might be empty, null. It might be that we have not assigned anything to the players yet because the database hasn't finished getting them. Um, so something we can do is we can wrap all of this. We can say, uh, if it's null, then we'll say loading, and a little p tag. Else, we will show the table. So now we'll stop complaining because it recognizes, like, okay, you've already handled null, right? Before it was saying, you haven't, it could be null. I'm going to freak out if you try and count over something that doesn't even exist yet um, with this for each thing, right? Won't, won't even build. Uh, but now we have handled it. We've said, okay, okay, if it's null, we'll show loading. And then once it has loaded, then we'll, now it's safe to go and count over them. So we can finally show all the, after all this, we can finally show the, the player. Um, so we'll have the player name here. Um, so by the way, if you know HTML, right? Table, T head, paragraph tag, all those things. Hopefully that's familiar to you if you're making a web game, super basic knowledge. And when we want to break into C sharp, uh, we start with an at sign, as you can see. So here we've said, okay, for each player and all players, at player, okay, I want their name. Um, and here we're going to do player and we're going to have the sign up date because that's something that exists. Um, and you can turn this into, there's like short string, long string, I forget. We'll just do sign update plane. I think it will have some sort of um, people thing. It's really interesting to me that this isn't working. Like I swear this once worked, so I don't know what happened. Uh, I'll just restart. And again, I think if you have VS Code, you have to anyway. So, And honestly, Visual Studio might be a little better. That might be one of the things that Visual Studio is better at is the hot reload. OK, so this isn't super great. You can see that the sign update uh, includes time and all this stuff. Um, I really thought it was like too short date or something or too short date string. I really thought there was something like that, but there's other ways to do it. So we can say to string and we can do there's crazy formatting here. I'm hoping sometimes the IDE even helps with this. Does it not know that this is a date? Is that why? It might be null. Ooh, that's never true. That's something I should change in the base. Um, let's pretend that that's not like that. So let's see if that gives me. Okay, here we go. So to universal time compared to to string. There's still not the too short that I'm used to, but I should now be able to whoops, give it a string. Okay, so I can say I'll fix that in the base game. So if you're following along, you won't encounter that problem I just had. You don't have to go delete that question mark that I just deleted. This will be fixed for you. Um, so we can say like uh, year, 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 year. Here we go. Nice. It's giving me the suggestions like I was hoping. So here we can just pick. And this is just a silly string format that you just have to somehow know that that's how you format dates. How would you know that? Uh, you got to read the documentation for dates on um, Microsoft's website for how you format dates with two string. Um, so I personally, this format drives me crazy because I don't know, it just does. So I'm going to go for, let's do this, 2008, April 18th. Um, and actually, maybe I'll even be weird. We'll say April 18th, comma, here's the year. Let's do it that way. I don't know why I keep clicking apply changes. It's not going to work. Reload. And then, since we're here, how long has this video been going? 18 minutes? We'll spend a couple more minutes to make the table look just a little better. Um, oh, and it keeps opening this in a new tab. Okay, sign up date. So let's do some things to make tables look a little better. And let's just do it for tables across the board. So you may have, depending on how much HTML you know, tables can be a little controversial. We shouldn't use tables for layout. Um, I would, this is kind of a gray area. I would argue this is a table of data, right? We've got clear columns, clear rows, like this is clearly a table. We could even imagine other columns with other data, like when they last played or, you know, number of pets, right? We, we might imagine a situation where we add more information about players. Um, maybe their level, if, if your players can individually level up separate from their pets, you know, you, depending on your game, you might have other, other data. And so this really feels like a table to me. Um, I think that tables should look a little better in this game. This game has made no attempt to make tables look nice. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put in my site CSS some styling to make tables a little better. Um, so generally the head, for example, um, you know, maybe we'd have a line underneath. Uh, let's do that. So I'll say any uh, table cells inside the head. Uh, we'll put a border on the bottom. It's like a dark gray. And I think this you can re yeah okay this you can refresh um anything in the site css you can reload and you'll always get it um there is a border collapse collapse that's the thing you need to do 
And also we'll put a little bit of padding on all these things. And if you're wondering about CSS, I mean, that's a whole other thing to learn. Um, all right, but we're getting somewhere. Um, I would like these to be uh, text align left. You may have noticed the sign up date doesn't quite line up. That's because it's centering it. Um, and then, I don't know, let's put in the T body between rows. Oh, this is interesting. So my AI is suggesting to do a kind of zebra striping effect. Uh, that's certainly a route you could go. Maybe I'll go with it. Um, so here we go. That makes it look a little better. Uh, let me try a slightly darker color. Ooh, that's a little, maybe too dark. So whatever. I just wanted the tables to look a little nicer. Um, and you know what? If we're going with table striping, I feel like that's okay. We'll leave it at that. Um, you know, arguably you could do some more padding. It really depends on. Yeah. Okay. I'll go with it. So here we go. So here's our list of players. Um, the only other thing I'd say maybe we ought to do is, I mean, th there's no way to get back to the home page. That's something I should probably build in. Uh, there's also no way to get to the list of players. So let's just add a quick link to the um, index page. That, um, you know, maybe we'll add a couple. In fact, we'll have like a link to sign up. So that's at the sign up. Um, and then let's also add a list of players. Uh, view all players. All right. Oh, right. It's not going to work. We need to restart. That's not just a CSS change. Hopefully I got those URLs right. Doing it off the top of my head. Um, so here's sign up. Cool. You don't want to look at that. View all players. So again, there is an oversight in this. Um, there is no limit to the number of players it will get. So when you have like 50 100, 200 players, it's going to pull all of them in and list all of them out. And you don't want that. Um, I, I think this video has kind of gone long enough. So I'm going to leave that as an exercise to the viewer. I kind of have mixed feelings about that. I think it is really important whenever you're programming to never assume, don't make assumptions about how long things will be or how short things will be. Like, you might be tempted, you know, maybe you're like, oh, I want a little more spacing. So I'll make it so the name, like something you could do is you could say, I want to I make the name column always be, you know, 120 pixels, because um, I think that's enough space. Um, but then you've made an assumption about how long a, a name string could be. What if someone's name is longer? And you're like, well, I'll put a maximum length. It's like, well, what if they're silly and put all W's? Because W's are very wide characters, right? So that's one example of like, just don't make assumptions about how long a string might be, um, visually especially. Also, don't make assumptions about like how much data you think is there. You know, if you let's say you allow players to like tag things, like oh, they just want to tag their pets, so they can easily search them. Well, how many tags are you going to allow? You might think it's like oh, people will never do more than ten. It's like, but what about for the one weird person who does like five hundred? Is your page going to be okay with that? Um, and similarly on this page, what if you know right now it's safe to just pull all the users, but what if there's fifty? What if there's a hundred? What if there's a thousand? What if someone decides to be silly and start just spam creating a ton of accounts? You always want to err on the side of caution. Um, so a much safer thing to do here, we can just do a one quick thing. We would say, take only 20. We're only going to take 20 on this page, and then we'll get a list. Um, the problem now is, and this is much safer, but the problem is it's always only going to be the first 20. So if you wanted to have um, links to say next page, previous page, there is a skip that you could use. So you could say skip 20 to go to the page two, skip 40 to go to page three, right? Skip 60 to go to the right? So these are the sorts of things you'd want to build yourself. But like in general, and especially when asking the database, don't just take the whole freaking table. Even if you think you're like, oh, but no one would make it huge. It's like someone might. And, and you don't want that to uh, catch you unawares and crash your server, or just make things horribly slow or whatever. So. I don't know, just just a little just a little advice, <laughs> parting advice for this video. So anyway, here we go. We have a list of all players in the game. How exciting. You could imagine making um, profile pages. Maybe you put someone's name and it takes you to their page, right? Where you go from here is up to you. That's kind of going to be the theme of these videos. Um, but hopefully this gets you started. So that's it for this video. Uh, again, I hope to make more of these, more features, um, breeding, you know, selling items, maybe equipping pets with, with equipment. Um, Whatever. If you've got any ideas, uh, leave them in the comments. That'd be great. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.